I'm pretty sure that when movies and television came out, people thought that no one would be reading anymore. And while that very much didn't happen, but audiobooks for some reason seem to be a bit of a bigger threat. Maybe because they are a lot more similar to books themselves, and for some people they seem to be more fun and entertaining. But I am not completely sold on the idea itself that audiobooks count as reading at all. So in this video, I wanted to go through a full exploration as to how I approach audiobooks in general, why I think they don't count as as reading and are worse than reading, why I think they might count as reading, and lastly how I personally approach audiobooks by myself. So you don't have to watch this full video, my final result is that, I mean yes they do count as reading but they are completely not ideal, but if you want to stick around I'm going to get started right now. So first I'm going to go through my arguments as to why audiobooks do not count as reading. Number one, you're just not reading or you're listening, which is kind of the definition of reading books in general, so just wanted to put that out there. The second reason I think audiobooks are inferior to reading is because you are not being paced by yourself, but you are being paced by someone else. I think that every time someone reads a book, they put their own individual spin on it, which means that they are reading it at their own pace, bringing their own baggage and their own history and their own kind of mental dynamics into what is the best part and the worst part of the book and what to read a lot faster and what to read a lot slower. Well, when you're reading an audiobook, this pacing is done externally by just the narrator or the person who is reading so you don't really have the space to kind of focus and take things in depth where you want to and kind of skim over the parts that you don't think are as important because everything is being put on kind of the level of importance that the narrator thought was the best which I just don't agree with so I think the sort of external forced pacing kind of ruins the experience of reading for me when it comes to audiobooks. Next I think that audiobooks just take away so much of the imagination that can be put in place when you are reading a physical book by yourself. A big reason that I used to love reading before audiobooks when I was a lot younger was because I could just build whole worlds in my mind and build whole characters and imagine what they looked like and what they spoke like and where they lived and what they dressed and all the colours and all of these things I could just build in my mind's eye and when you have an audiobook a lot of this kind of disappears because especially the human characteristics, so the way that people speak and their tone of voice and what they emphasise and what they say, all of this you can't really imagine because it's being said by someone else, so it becomes a lot harder to kind of deviate from that, so you just take what they are saying. And in this way, you cannot play a lot with the characters. If someone has a certain voice, it's a lot harder to kind of build what they look like in a way that's not related to that voice, so you're kind of guided along a more forced path with less room for imagination in building these worlds and the characters in books. And also I find very often with audiobooks it tends to be the same person that narrates all characters, so even though they tend to be extremely extremely talented voice actors, the issue is there are still some limitations when someone of one gender is narrating people of other genders or other nationalities or other accents, it just doesn't tend to work as well I think in audiobooks, so I feel as though I am robbed from so many opportunities to use my imagination and it feels still more like listening to a movie rather than reading a book itself. So I think for this reason there's a lot less imagination that can be used when audiobooks are involved as opposed to physical books themselves. Themselves. Next, and this is very very important for me, note taking when it comes to audiobooks is an absolute nightmare. It is so 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 difficult. When it comes to physical books that I'm reading either like on paper or either online, I can highlight them and take notes in the margins or copy things to different places or take photos of things. When it comes to audiobooks it's just words, so I always have to kind of pause what people are saying and then write them down somewhere else or type them somewhere and it just becomes a complete nightmare and I have to scroll through things again and again um, to kind of get the exact same words where in a physical book I could just underline something for a second and move on, in an audiobook this becomes a huge chore and a proper task and it's just so much more annoying. So that I find extremely frustrating with audiobooks. Lastly, and this is very important to me, is the sensory experience tends to be so different with audiobooks compared to physical books. With a physical book I am probably sitting somewhere and I am actually touching something and feeling something and turning pages and hearing that sound and there is kind of the smell of the pages and the folding of the pages and I have sensory synesthesia so um, touching things and feeling things is really 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 important for me and because I have none of this experience with an audiobook it tends to be quite dry and much less of an 
enjoyable experience because I'm just kind of like on my own holding on to myself rather than touching something and feeling something somewhere. So this tends to be a huge thing for me. It doesn't really give me that whole book experience that I would get when I am holding on to kind of like a physical object. Next, I'm going to move on to arguments for reading audiobooks. The first one is that they are very accessible to people who perhaps cannot read. I have a lot of people in my life who have different forms of dyslexia or different sorts of disabilities, for example, that make reading physical books a lot harder. And for that reason, I think audiobooks are an absolute godsend for that group of people, especially audiobooks make reading possible or easier or enjoyable or more accessible to a larger group of people that would otherwise be almost alienated from physical books. Next, audiobooks are undoubtedly a lot easier to travel with. You don't have to carry them anywhere. Some people make hardcover books that are literally so, so big that I think is ridiculous because you can't actually carry them in your bag anywhere easily and they tend to be quite heavy or you can forget them places either at home or on the tube somewhere and then the book is completely lost. So I think an audiobook will always be just on your phone and you can access it from anywhere that you like. And so that travel aspect tends to be a lot easier. You need certain conditions to be able to read a physical book. So for example, you need sufficient lighting and you can't be like walking down or crossing the street while reading a physical book that would just be completely unsafe in a city like London. So definitely audiobooks tend to be more safe and easier to use anywhere. So you can listen to them in a kind of a dark bus while you're traveling somewhere, or you can listen to them in an airplane. You can listen to them while you're crossing the street if you don't have your noise cancelling on. So they tend to be more accessible and you can kind of read while you are doing other things, which you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. The next thing about audiobooks is that you can speed read a lot easier. Now I've been obsessed with speed reading ever since I could read basically. And I've been training myself to speed read physical books for a very long time. And I'm quite happy with how fast I can do that. However, audiobooks can take this to a whole other level. It is so, so, so much easier to speed read an audiobook. I've gotten to the point where I can listen to a fully long book in the space of two, three hours, which I would never be able to do properly if I were to read it itself. So I think speed reading, if that's something that you're into for specific types of books, is a lot easier with audiobooks than with physical books. Also kind of feeding on this, I think that you can get a lot more reading done with audiobooks because firstly, you can fit it around little spaces in the day without having the book on you. Also, it's a lot harder to pause and stop it. So if you're reading a physical book, it's a lot easier to kind of just dart your eyes away or get distracted by something and stop reading. While with an audiobook, you would need to pull your phone out, pause it, play it again, which tends to become a lot of pain. And for that reason, I find it, I find the inertia a lot stronger on an audiobook. If you're the kind of person who wants to force yourself to read for longer or completely finish books, I find that doing this with an audiobook tends to be slightly easier. Although in general, this is not something that I struggle with anyway. So, but it is an observation of mine. The next thing that's quite good is that you don't accumulate physical books because everything is virtual. And I'm currently still on a ban where I'm not allowed to buy physical books anymore. But with audiobooks, I can buy as much as I want, basically. And they tend to all be virtual, which, like I said, has its pros and cons, but at least it doesn't clutter your space and you don't need to wait for things to arrive or just carry them around and things like that. The last thing that I want to mention is that they do create jobs for voice actors. I have a soft spot for actors in general, so I feel that it's quite nice that they get to, you know, narrate books and have these extra job opportunities for them. They technically just give you the same information in a completely different form, but I do think that there are huge differences still between the audiobooks and the physical books. And for that reason, I have my own kind of method for deciding what to read where. When it comes to pop psychology books, and these tend to be kind of modern-ish books, so the more recent ones, which kind of are very fluffy, if I can say so. And what I mean by that is that they will make one central point of the book. They will have one core argument and then they will just use 20,000 different examples in every chapter just to make that same argument. These are the sort of books that are not written with any kind of pleasure in mind. They're definitely non-fiction and the writing is not that beautiful. It kind of makes sense more informational rather than a good experience. So these are the kind of books that are very, very dry and they tend to be quite helpful because I find that I get a lot of information from these books, but there's no reason for me to kind of focus on them for too long and too much, if that makes sense, or read them very slowly because I find that I get no extra kind of pleasure from them. And I would rather speed read these books fast so I can read actually good literary pieces of work in a very slow and paced way. So when it comes to pop psychology books or these modern non-fiction books, I tend to always read this as an audiobook where I will speed read it super, super fast and I will just make notes on the most important parts of the book itself. I find these to be very, very good for audiobooks. Or when I find a book that's written extremely, extremely well, for example, 1001 Essays That Will Change Your Life or um, 4000 or the book 4000 Weeks, these two books were just so incredible that within a few minutes of the audiobook, I realized, no, these 
these are just too good for an audiobook so I will always then buy the physical version and read the physical version of the book. So in general my stand is if a book isn't that well written or if you are not reading it for information so or if you're reading it only for informational purposes and not for pleasure I would rather read an audiobook version of it because I can get through it faster and it's much more efficient however if a book is well written or definitely if it's any form of fiction I will always read the physical version of it because I just enjoy using my imagination and enjoying the experience at my own pace at my own rate very very slowly the only slight exception to this is Harry Potter because I've read it tens of times as a physical book and now I just read the audiobook before I go to bed but in general most fiction books I very much enjoy them as a physical version so yep if you're interested in reading at all I have a whole bunch of videos on how I take notes or how I speed read but otherwise thank you so much for spending this time with me I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think thanks bye